What's going on, everybody? What is going on? It's another wonderful week here at The Focus. We had so much fun. We had some discussions before the camera started. <laughs> Juice is already flowing. You know, we already started talking about the, the quarterback that plays for that Washington football team. But we're going to leave that alone until Octavia gets into her NFL East segment. The first, which we can't wait to hear. Isn't that right, Octavia? That is correct. I can't wait to hear what you have to say because as an Eagles fan, I'm pretty sure it's not going to be biased, right? <laughs> 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 Anyways, though, man, we were, we happy to be here. Um, the video you guys just saw to open the show was, um, if you paid attention to the show last week, we had Brian Edge and Marcus Houghton here for DMV Elite 80. The event happened this past weekend. Uh, our Cardale Dudley was there. No surprise. He was in the gym with a lot of young <laughs> prospects. So that being said, Cardale, you know, tell us what you thought about uh, the DMV Elite 80 this year, sir. Uh, it was, uh, I'm not going to say the best. It was, it was one of the best I've seen since they started. It uh, was very competitive. Um, thank God everybody that was supposed to be there showed up for the most part. Um, you could, I like that they competed. They competed from opening drills, warm-ups, before the game started. You know, you could tell guys were there to really show everybody why I am who I am, why I'm getting these offers, and why you're not. And I really appreciated that. We need that more. And, you know, with, you know it, it was much needed, man. You know, DMV Lee did a great job getting the right type of players. The coaching was good. The training, you know, it was just a first-class event, you know, for the most part. Um, as usual, there were a lot of standouts. Bear with me. Mm -hmm. I got to give them a lot. Oh, it was over 100 players. <laughs> but I'm not so going to so make the list for the show. Anybody. Who made the list for the show, and how did you figure out the criteria? Who stood out? Okay. Sometimes you just got to go in there and don't just throw all that out the window. Just show me, you know what I'm saying? And these are the players that stood out. Um, not in no particular order. Uh, I like Matt Belant out of Springbrook. You know, 2018 6 3 guard, explosive as hell. Oh my Lord Jesus. He get a step, it's a dunk. He's not laying nothing up. Very explosive guard. I love his potential. Um, he had a consistent jumper. You know, he can go far with it. Earl Timberlake, y'all will be hearing about a lot about him. Um, he's at the Matha, 2020 guard. You know, 6'6, six, six, do, do everything. Sneaky, athletic, versatile. You know, Kind of in that D Wade mode. He don't have the strength yet, but he will. Obviously, being at the math, they will develop him. So he would get there in no time. His future is crazy bright. Gibson Jemison, y'all probably heard a lot about him from Ange being on the show, played for the Blue Devils, a sniper, uh, sneaky, <coughs> sneaky gamer, you know, really crafty, like uh, um, in a Chris Muller mode, you know what I'm saying? But he's a righty, 2019 guard, 6'6 guard. He's definitely going to open eyes if y'all don't know about him out there already. Um, another one, Donovan Tolley. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> uh, it was a chalk outline. And then, uh, he scored 10 straight on his dude ISO. Once he figured out he's the point guard for Riverdale Baptist, 5'8", 2018. But when he knows you cannot guard him, he has he, – he, he's, he's mean with it. 10 straight special. ISOs, though? No, 10 straight points. Not okay. 10 straight points. Like, okay. Five straight move, move. Cross dude over him. But it was like, yo, Dang, he they had to call a timeout. Yeah, with a run the clock. They had to call a timeout to get – Youngin' out of there because it was getting that bad, and it was, I was like, man. I'm like, switch. He's very oh. competitive. He, he's, <laughs> he, he's competitive like Patrick Beverly competitive. Mm. So, But, you know, it's he got the offensive game with it. So when he okay. get mad, it's Quick right. question as a smaller guard. Um, <clears throat> you know, think of another smaller guard that came out of the area. Uh, is his game at all similar to Likes at all? Likes had more shiftiness. This dude don't play around you. He, he going to just use his quickness by about go past. He doesn't play with his food. Yeah, <laughs> he's just about getting the buckets, getting you about it. He's a killer, and that's what I love about him. Um, Adwood Newton out of McKinley Tech in D.C. 2019. He's going to prep in the 2020 class, 6-7-4. Love his game. Anwar Gill from Gonzaga. You will be hearing a lot about Gonzaga, obviously, with the WCAC. <laughs> really fundamentally sound player. Knows what he is and don't step out of that. That's what makes him good. 6-4 mm -hmm. guard, 2019. Um, Shaheen Gilkerson, you know, Chris Rohn, that's his uh, point guard for Virginia Academy, star point guard, 2018 six foot guard, one of the best two way guards in high school in the area. Um, loves to play defense. He's one of the few that like loves it. Like he he 94 feet, old Joe West oh, with it. Mm. But you know, <laughs> I love it. He's that's just a jump away. He's a, he, he's a jump away from being all around just nasty. You know, he can get to the hole, he can finish, he's tough. Once he had a jump, it's, it's over. The kid who stole the show. Um, He's actually, I think, from Turkey. He's mm. a transfer to John Carroll. His name is Yabu Um 2019 6'7 guard. So he came in there dunking. Like, he was on some, like, T-Mac ABCD camp. So, like, <laughs> everybody, like, he jumped out to the point where coaches were like, yo, who is he? 
And then I was like, oh, I think that's the kid that's going to John Carroll. They was like, man, John Carroll, because he's going to be playing with Mayweather quickly, <laughs> who's the highest ranked player in that area. Then Montez Matthews, who's one of the top shooting guards area, just committed to Rutgers. So that promoted was how, real over there. Yeah, they was like, oh, man, John Carroll. Got <laughs> yeah, it was real. And he's special. And he, he, he's, he has a Ginobili type game. Mm. But he has no fear. Like he, and when he gets his, like I say, when he gets his stuff, he tried done. But he has already NBA athleticism, windmilling, one leg, catching lobs. He's, I seen him in drills. He shot a jumper. He knew he was gonna miss, and he um, took a step off the vertical, went above everybody, one hand, just cocked and dunked on everybody. Like he's, he's stupid. And the thing is, he's still raw. Like you can still see the rawness. So when they add that athleticism with the training tone, he build up, get stronger. Add a job, but it's definitely high major, and he got a shot at the league. Like I don't throw that out there too what often. Year but, is he? I'm sorry, I missed that part. Um, he's gonna be a junior. Okay. He graduated 2019. Uh, he's already made his name a uh, name up for himself over there, and you know, feed with a um, lower level feed with junk. So he's on his way. <laughs> Another kid that a lot of people around here should be familiar with. He had a story written on him by ESPN before he even played high school. Shea Evans Jr. Yeah. Um, out of Delaney, 2020 guard, 6'7". Um, you know, Melo. I mean, that's who he looked like. And young, young Carmelo Anthony. That's how he plays. Breaks you down, smooth. Jumper got the size, sneaky, athletic. You know, and um, he knows what he do. He know how to put the ball in the bucket. You know, simple as that. Jason Murphy, another Baltimore area kid. You know, you gonna see a lot of Baltimore doing it out there. They really stacked out there. Um, Jason Murphy out of St. Francis, 2019, six eight, workhorse for Demetrius Mills out of Baltimore Poly, defending Maryland State champions. You know, star guard, Long Beach State commit. 2018 class 66 guard you know he do a little <coughs> bit of everything you know he he's sharp athletic big guard take you off the dribble off the bounce pull up mid-range game on point you know i love his talent he stood out ace baldwin that's another kid you got a, another 2020 one of them young kids that you gotta keep an eye on he's special um he's on he's at st francis too um 2020 like i said 5 11 point guard does it all already already understands how to run a position and it, he really has no weaknesses in this game. It's just a matter of if you know, he's going to keep growing and if that athleticism going to come and match everything he has. He has all the tools already. Um, Darius Hines, he really impressed me. Um, I, I didn't really know much about him before then. And he's just a consummate floor general, kind of what me and Dama was talking about. But he can shoot. He's really, he's, he lets the game come in. Whatever the team needs, he can deliver. And that's what makes him special. And he knows every situation. 5'11 guard, you know, 2018. You know, another kid, Braden Gall, out of Battlefield, Virginia, 2018, 6'4 guard. Um, same thing. It's steady, steady shooter, sniper. That's the game come to him. He don't really step outside himself, and that's key. A lot of players try to do too much, and it messes mm -hmm. them up. He knows where he is, and he stays within that. But he got some shift with him. Like, you know, in the highlight, you know, he came down the break, gave a dude a dribble, spent off him in one motion, left hand and lay up in traffic, you know, so – you know, don't think of him as the typical, you know, I hate to say it, but it is real, you know, typical white boy when you guard him. He, he, he'll mess you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Ricky Lindo, you know, you should know about him. That's um, Wilson's best player. You know, mm -hmm. Angelo came on the show 2018. He's going to prep in a 2019 class 6 eight wing. Um, I always say he kind of remind me a lot of Tayshawn Prince. That's his game. He do a little bit of everything. Um, very hustle. He did it on both ends. So I love what he brought. Um, another big, I never, another one I, I just got introduced to, Churchill Bounds. Stephen Decatur, 2020, big, 6'9". Um, he's not very athletic, but he's skilled as hell. Like, he went to the block, jump hooks. He got all that mid-range, can step out, shoot the three-pointer. You know, he's a problem. And he got time to develop that, change his body, to get more athleticism to thrive. Justin Lewis, another young and out of Baltimore, Baltimore Poly, they're going to be a problem again. Um, 2020, 6'7 guard. I mean, sneaky, athletic, man. I keep saying sneaky because you don't expect him to do it especially being as young as he is. But I seen him go coast to coast and dunked on. He dunked on a couple dudes, you know. I mean, his talent, he's one of, he's, if Shea's probably number one with that class, as far as the top players in that 2020 class, he's right below him, like second or third. So he's right there neck for neck. And he, you know, he knows how to play the game as well. Christian Jones, man, he like in the microwave, man. I don't know what's up with that kid, <laughs> man. Like, out of Annapolis, 2018-6-2. God, could nobody guard him off the bounce. He's not nasty like Kyrie with it. Like I said, he, he gets you all balanced and he goes and he's strong, he compact, he finishes. Could nobody keep him out of the lane and he just did what he wanted. And he he's 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 definitely gonna be one of the top scorers in the area. Matthew Arrowback, WT Wilson's twenty eighteen six five guard, another sniper, another shooter. I don't know, W T Wilson pumping them out. It's a, it's a couple of them on his list, man. So I think they're defending state champs too. So I mean out of Virginia, so I see why. 
Um, Allen Blunt, another Gonzaga play, a Gonzaga player, 2018 6'6 six, six guard. Uh, another one. He's more of an athlete than um, Anwar, but he has skill as well. But he relies more on athleticism and his length. You know, he's 6'6, six, six, but I think he's long enough. He got like a 6'9 wingspan. So mm. that's what his versatility is. EJ Jarvis, out of Murray in DC, 2019, 6'8 forward center. Sneaky athletic kid, you know, shot blocker. But now, you know, I remember him last year when they um when a DCS double A, and then one time I see he got a mid range now, like he don't hesitate. He just knock, yeah, exactly. And so I love that about him. He's he's improving. Um, Kenneth Tyree, our friendship tech, DC, 2018 five nine guard, another one of those feisty guards out of DC. Real highly competitive, keeping an eye on Judah Jordan, Capital Christian Maryland, 2019 six two guard, quiet assassin. Like he 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 don't say much. But he just tears you up, man. He he loves and he loves the one on one battle. Like if you see a mismatch, he has no problem exploiting that. And he kills you quietly. Like you can just tell how he how he rolls. He just knows he's nice. And he you know he don't have no badge about. He's not badge about showing it. Um, Kashawn Hobbs out of Duval, another one, 2018 six foot guard, another strong guard. Loves to attack the basket and finish. Josiah Marable, he's different. He's he's built more like track the trailer back in the day, Michigan, oh, or whatever. Okay. Out of Wilson, you know so. Defend the DCIAA champion, so they're going to be a problem again this year. 2018, he's going to prep in the 2019 class, too. 6'8", but he a big boy. They couldn't do nothing with him. They couldn't keep him off the boards. He finished whenever he wanted. Even when he was in traffic, he, they was bouncing off of him. He was still converting layups. Um, so he's going to dominate in the DCIAA. Nate Spurlock, WT Wilson, like I said, 2018-6-7-4. Uh, he's definitely a poor man's Chris Muller because he has the size more so. And... But he don't he don't have the shiftiness, but he has the size, the IQ, and he's just a bucket man. He 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 can move without the ball. He knows where to go to be effective to get the offensive rebound and score. I mean, you know, he that's his game. So he's perfect for the college game. And another guy from PG, you probably heard of Daniel Oladapo, not Oladipo, Oladapo, Bladensburg, <laughs> Maryland, 2018, with prep in 2019 class, six six guard. He's a smaller, less explosive Gerald Wallace. So no hmm. said it. It's not bad at all. That's a, that's that's a lot listing. of talent. Yeah. And yeah, you know, I, I had the number now, but like I say, it was one of the best they had in their five year run. And it, it's going to be loaded, but definitely, um, obviously, pay attention to everything. I'm going to be bringing it, but Baltimore going to be heavy this year. Like, <laughs> They're going to be loaded. No, that, just, no, that makes there. somebody in the room happy. I mean, they ain't going to be heavy. Like, Baltimore got it. Like, <laughs> They're going to be loaded. But uh, as always, you guys head over to find more about the DMV Elite 80. Head over to finestmagazine.com. Going to take a quick break. When we get back, uh, local coverage. You guys know what it is. We're going to talk a little bit of Mystics. Um, that first quarter just ended in Minnesota. Uh, they advanced, if you didn't know by now, to the semifinals, which is kind of like the men's version of the conference finals because they did away with conferences in playoffs <laughs> on the WNBA side, which I wish the men would follow. But the Lynx lead 26-18 after one. You're watching the focus. We took a quick. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be right back. I right, just for you guys, um, mm -hmm. personally, uh, another big night on the glass. How important was it for you guys to get back to dominating the glass? And do you expect to do it in that fashion this evening? Um, what well, was a huge emphasis for us? We knew that that was one of the things that um, Dallas does really well was get on the glass, so we wanted to make sure that we controlled it um, for 40 minutes. And so uh, a lot of the rebounding starts with me, so I wanted to make sure that I went out there and did my part on the rebounding end. Um, but a lot of people stepped up in that category. I'm pretty sure Emma and Lena each had double-figure rebounding as well. So that was a huge factor for us to be able to get the stops and then finish it with the rebound. All right, we heard you uh, hear from many of all at times kind of screaming out directions to your teammates on the glass. Um, from the beginning of the season to now, do you feel like this tonight, um, from a, being on a safe page defensively, is one of y'all's best nights in the season? Yes, I definitely think so. Um, we just wanted to have each other's backs out there tonight. Make sure that we were constantly in help side, constantly talking to each other. Um, trust in the defense of him is built through communication. We just wanted to make sure that we communicated um, and forced him to take tough shots and then again finish up with the rebound at the end. Uh, you mentioned about having each other's back. It, was very, it got very physical out mm -hmm. there tonight. Um, how well of a job do you think you guys did at keeping your head in spite? them kind of try to muddy the game up or try to get you guys out of it mentally? I thought we did a great job of keeping our heads. I mean, there was plenty of times when 
uh, the refs had to review it. I don't know how many reviews they did tonight, but you know, we kept our heads, we kept composed, we kept being aggressive, we kept attacking, um, and we didn't let that alter our focus at all tonight. And then lastly, uh, we mm -hmm. play up front with two very good offensive players. Mm -hmm. Talk about the job they did defensively next to you guys. You guys seem like you're on the all year. Um, I thought they did a great job. I mean, we again, we forced everybody into tough shots. We know one of our strengths is that we have length, um, so we want to just kind of build a wall um, and put our hands up and defend. I thought in Elena, they did a great job. We asked a lot of them on the offensive end, but I thought that they brought it equally as well tonight on the defensive end um, and just show what they could do on both ends, ends of the floor. Right, lastly, with this kind of the first two rounds being kind of NCAA style, mm -hmm. so kind of an advanced kind of, um, is it going to be hard for you guys to keep that same mentality, that grit, that fight you play with this evening? No, I mean, it makes it easier. If you don't win, you go home. You know, there's nothing to save. There's nothing to uh, rest for tomorrow. You know, you go out there, you pour everything you got into it. Um, you play that way, play as the aggressor, good things will happen. How great was it to be back tonight? Uh, it, it's really good. Um, you know, I was blessed in the fact that my injury wasn't too much. Um, you know, this is what we play all year for is the playoffs. Um, so it's a really good feeling for me to be able to get back on the court, back with my teammates and get a run in. Defensively, you guys were amazing tonight. Um, as T said, uh, you guys did a good enough to win. Do you think it's another level you guys might have to hit on that end of the floor if you want to make a deep run? For sure. Um, defense wins championships in my mind. So, um, you know, we did a good job tonight, but there's always things that we can fix. Uh, we really need to be on a string, especially when we get to these top ranked teams. So, um, we'll do film work, we'll learn from it, um, we'll prepare better, but I think this was a step in the right direction for us. All right, with a letter like this, did she share any words with you guys heading into this game about the playoffs or not too much? Yeah, um, of course. You know, she's been a big voice the last few days of practice and shoot around and before the game. Um, you know, just leading the way. You know, she's been in this position, she's won championships, so um, anything that she has to t say, we take and, and we apply it, so she's been great. I've been last year starting to hear, uh, it feels like this something's been happening since you've been here. You guys get to the playoffs and sometimes earlier in the season. Teams feel like they can physically impose their will on you guys. Mm -hmm. So now you guys, as you said earlier, you know, you kept your head, but is that something that you guys feel too? I mean, you guys think of that? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, there have been games where people have thrown punches at us and we haven't responded really well. So I think a lot of teams think, oh, if we can bully them, then we can, then we can win. But um, you know, we had a mindset going into this game, especially with Dallas, that it was going to be ugly um, and that it might come to blows sometimes, which we saw at the end, towards the end. But um, we responded so well, and I'm proud of this team. Um, and, you know, if we can be this relentless going forward, it's going to play in our favor. So we just need to be ready to throw punches, too. What's going on, everybody? We're back. <laughs> I tell you, yeah, not even, we're going to talk about that later. But we're back from break. I don't even want to know because I've seen y'all's faces at the moment. So uh, we're back from break. As we told you, we're going to talk about the misses real quick. A uh, quick update on their score right now is 28 19. Um, they are in Minnesota for the first part of this five game series. Winner. They play game two. Uh, Minnesota's up. Okay. They play game two on Thursday night, and then they'll play game three here in D.C. on Sunday. So that's how that series is going. As far as Mystics notes, real quick, let me pull out my handy dandy book. Um, they beat the Wings, then they beat the Liberty. Um, mm -hmm. They went over the Wings. We saw that at home. We were here for that. Um, that you know, it was literally just showing them trying to change the narrative that they're a soft team. That some teams see them as soft and think that they could bully them. Um, in the Liberty game, we saw them go down early, and then Christy Tolliver reminded everybody why she's Christy Tolliver. Um, they went through a couple games this season where her shot just wasn't quite falling right, but. You know, big time players do big things and big moments, and she came through for them. Um, hit nine threes, 10 to 20 from the floor, nine to 15 from three. Um, they needed every one of those 32 points to come out that hole. Um, and then defensively, they did a great job, especially Crystal Thomas. I know we keep saying unsung hero all season, um, but I mean, there's a reason for it. The job that she did on Tina Charles, the 14 to 8 to 17 shooting, sure, there were times that they sent another person, but for the most part, they were able to kind of limit the Liberty during that 15-0 run they had in the third quarter, which is when they really won the game. I think they outscored New York 25-10 to 10 in that quarter. Could be wrong. And if I am wrong, you can get over to my mental sports and check our recap of the game and also go to finalsmagazine.com. 
That being said, um, big shout out to Crystal Thomas for the job she did on Tita Charles. Um, then as a team, defensively as a whole, um, and you know, as of right now, they, they've uh, they've made a little headway. They cut the deficit to seven in Minnesota. That's a tall task. Um, taking on the Lynx, uh, the Lynx and the Sparks in the middle of like their round two of their Cleveland Golden State type mm -hmm. rivalry uh, in the WNBA side of things. So right now, Phoenix and Washington are the two teams that stand in the way of them meeting again. Mm -hmm. um, so both both games happen tonight. So for Washington, um, it's imperative, Cardell, you and I talk that the Washington bigs, that they, they hold their own on the board. Sylvia Fowles is tough. It's a reason that she's went nuts this year. It's a reason that Minnesota's able to do what they do is because you can literally book 20, at least 20 and 10 for her each and every night. So you want to talk about, you know, just share some of the conversation we had about the keys to this matchup for Washington if they want to advance. I mean, it's all on the front court. I mean, I even, honestly, to be the links, the whole the entire team wants to play. Like, yeah. if, whatever your role is, you, you got to do that role. <laughs> you, can't, you can't afford for you to come and have an all game because yeah. that's how experienced, that's how talented, and that's how strong and competitive the links are. Um, but to me, the key is the front court. Like, even though Tolliver went off and uh, Messi's won, she she shouldn't really have to, had to do that. Yeah. Emma can't have five points, you know, nope. on the road if the Messi's are going to beat them. It Lynx. makes you feel better. She already has five. Yeah, but um, <laughs> whoever's guarding the fouls, fouls has nine points and five rebounds already. Yep. So, you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. she's already on the road, and Maya and Rebecca and uh, Simone – and they doing what they do. That's the problem. They deep, and that's the whole. That's what I'm saying. God, I mean, the girls gonna have to step up in the bench. Yeah, and the, other, uh, the, the other bench got to produce even more. Um, they can't turn the ball over. They did a great job against the Liberty not turning the ball over. You got to win a rebounding battle, turnover battle, mm -hmm. and that's just to put you in a good position. Yeah, but that's a, that's a hurry game. You you I don't care. You playing against the worst team in the league. You can't turn the ball over. They're gonna beat you. I mean, they're still pros. But again, like I get what you're saying. And um, the less you beat yourself, the better. Yeah. But at the same time. It's the physicality, not just yeah. on defense, on yeah. on rebounding, even on offense. Sometimes you just gotta take it at them, okay. let them know you there, because they sense any softness. They going, especially they're this team. They, yeah, they're gonna they're pray with you. And Deladon can't, she can't try to muscle her way to forty and stuff like that all the time. Emma, you you, she's well equipped. She, she gotta bring it. You know, like I see Deladon got five and five already. You know, Emma gotta bring it, man. So it, it's that front court, because that's what's gonna be the key. I, I think Sierra, well, she's going to battle Maya. You know what I'm saying? You can't stop Maya, but she's going to battle Maya. But And they got a host of bodies to throw at Maya. It's Sylvia and um, Bronson. Rebecca. That's literally it. Because Simone and Maya, you can live with them kind of getting their own. You want to slow down Lindsay, obviously. Mm -hmm. You hope that Maya at least works for hers. But like you said, that front court is everything with the front court. Mm -hmm. the, the Rebecca and Sylvia are a problem. as evidenced by, you know, they made some of the, uh, the all-league teams already. That those lists came out today. Um, and the last thing with the Mystics, uh, you, like I, we talk all the time that we both feel TRPs, like arguably the, the best on ball defender in the league. And she didn't make either one of the two um, all league team, all defensive teams, she's which is a star. joke. Because she's not a star. But they I had mean, number of names on there. But this is my thing is, is, you know, and again, for the growth of the league, you have to watch more than just the team in the area that you cover. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what it just shows me. You're, you're, not, you're not doing justice to the league by not watching everybody play. You can watch three missing games and come up, come away knowing that without her contributions, they they don't. They're not the same thing. You know. And she literally guards the one through the four. Yeah. Like it's it's not just her position. Mm -hmm. She guards point guards. She guard go she go in there and guard six five centers and ho like hold her own. She don't back down. Guard ninety four feet half court. She traps. A lot of times when the misses get beat, she's the one come over there and knocking the ball in the, out of bounds to save the layup or save the play. It's so many things she does. She, she's their spirit. She's yeah. their toughness, spirit, and they're not nearly as good without her because they're so, you know what I'm saying? Like, she's, yeah. the, she's the dog of that. She's the spirit of that team. She's the heart of that team. So, they, I mean, it's like what you see going on across sports. They're, they're promoting, they're trying to promote the league from the dollars and stuff, so they're promoting names. But you can't tell me she's not one of the ten top defensive players you in the can't league. Tell me That's she's BS. not a top five defensive That's player. That's my point. Like, I can't accept, I can't accept her at six. I, I just can't like this. There's a problem at five B, so they definitely, uh, definitely, you know, we gotta can't we we appreciate you here, at TRP. Um, you definitely make our all defensive team. On to DC United real quick. Over the week, you know, uh, past couple weeks, on a three game win streak. Um, it was snapped over the weekend against Orlando at home. At RFK. Orlando was able to uh, get out on them early, and then it, they held on. Um, they won two one. Um, tended training today. Rob Vincent's running on grass for the first time. Uh, since he got injured, so that's great. Uh, Ian Harks is back. Uh, coach said that he looked sharp. 
um, after the last 10 days of training. So it's, uh, you know, some, at least me, I'm anxious to see, you know, once Ian's healthy enough to get plugged in the midfield, I know Marcelo and uh, Russell have done great to see Ian in there with what the midfield might look, you know, the future of that midfield looking, uh, what we might see next year. Um, and then, you know, they, they were talking about the matchup in Chicago. They just want to spoil Chicago's weekend, just like Orlando spoiled their weekend last weekend. That's kind of the mindset for D.C. heading into Chicago this week. I'd save you your, your uh, debut segment of the <laughs> NFC East is here in local coverage. So, Well, I'm going to start off a little bit different for the first edition. Okay. Um, I wanted to give a little bit of love to the home team. So every, since, <laughs> since we since we always talk about, you know, local coverage and the teams in the area, oh, um, I'm going to leave the Redskins for last. Let's go start with the Ravens. <laughs> Ravens went out and surprised a lot of people this weekend. Yes. I didn't know Flag yeah. was playing. A lot of people didn't know either. I'm pretty sure he didn't know either. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, Bengals and the Ravens in Cincinnati. Yeah. Baltimore came right away with the win, twenty to zero. Let's just—I said twenty to zero. Like shutout, beginning of the season, division game, always important. Um, one of my biggest takeaways from this game was the defense. Four interceptions by four different secondary. So that's why he was going Dalton. I heard. Okay. Four interceptions by four different. Ladarius Webb, C.J. Mosley, Jimmy Smith. Good gosh. And. Oh, my gosh. Brandon Carr. I'm sorry. There we go. Dallas Not only. Brandon Carr? Dallas Brandon Carr? Oh, wow. Okay. Not only. Then you got Terrell Suggs get a forced fumble. Like, it was bad. So, that's why they were booing oh, <laughs> Andy Dalton. Um. Of course, Joe Flacco didn't play in the preseason, didn't play, do much during training camp, only really had about a week to get ready. Um, he did decent, you know, uh, looked a little rusty, of course, just getting back on the field. Ended up, his numbers ended up being, he ended with um, 121 yards, one touchdown, one interception, 9 of 17, not terrible. Of course, he needs to step it up for them to continue this push. Um, it was, you know, Flacco. It is what it is. One thing um, also that I definitely took away from it, that the Ravens are having a lot of injuries build up. Danny Woodhead out six to eight weeks. Um, and they're still determining with Zadarius Smith. Um, they're not sure if it's a knee or an ankle. It sounds like both. <laughs> they're still That's doing tough. MRIs and still testing. They haven't come right out yet and say how long he's going to miss. So um, that's definitely something they have to look into because they already started with about 11 players on the injured reserve as it is. Um, so, you know, they're definitely taking, the, taking it a little bit hard. So hopefully they get rested up some. Um, another takeaway from that game, Jeremy Macklin, new acquired as a Raven, got his first touchdown as a Raven. You do know Jeremy Macklin has a hard time getting touchdowns. So it was a good sign for him, although it was only two receptions on 56 yards. The pass that he got was a 48-yard um, to the house. Most of that was yards after the catch. Caught it wide open, kept it moving. So, I mean, it was good points with Baltimore. Um, definitely, you know, excited to see what happens next week, to see what they do. On to the home team, <laughs> your beloved Washington Redskins. I was in attendance. Um, I was in attendance at FedEx Field. Um, for the game and I will first say because this was my first game at FedEx it was a good atmosphere you know it was fun it was you know entertaining everybody seemed to be really into the game with that being said some of the things I took away from the game just looking on the Redskins side you know not being biased um, the fact that Kirk Cousins was your leading rusher serious issue yeah. serious issue um, Kirk Cousins rushed for four, had four carries for 30 yards. He tied with Robert Kelly, who had 10 rushes for 30 yards. So that, that, that's one of your biggest issues right there as well. You got your quarterback, you know, tying with your leading, the um, starting running back for rushing yards. Definitely something that they need to get together. Another part of this situation, Terrell Pryor, um, of course, everybody is, you know, beating down on him. He's beating down on himself. 
he actually had a quote that he said, I put this game on myself. Um, I definitely let my teammates down. I'll hold that. I'll hold my chin up high and work harder, but I don't like that right now. I'm shooting myself in the foot for dropping the ball. I'm really pissed at myself. You guys can beat me, can beat me up on that. He was 6'4", 11, 66 yards, five drops that were key drops. It wouldn't have been as bad if those drops weren't pivotal in the game. A lot of the drops that he had could have put them in position to score. A lot of, at least one that I can think off the top of my head would have been a touchdown if he caught it. So it completely changes the dynamic of the game, completely changes everything. So that's definitely something that, you know, we understand. He's only a two years in at being a wide receiver, but those catches that he definitely has to make. Um, I still have questions as far as do Redskins fans really believe in Kirk Cousins as the future? Um, there was a lot of mixed reviews in the stadium when I was there. Um, of course, lately, I mean, recently, Kirk just came out. He did put some of the blame on the offensive line, which, of course, he would. Um, and, I mean, there there is merit in it, but the offensive line is not having you throw interceptions. You know, you still have to be smart in being a, a quarterback and making sure that you're making the correct decisions. Now, um, of course, everybody wants to know about the controversial call at the end of the game. I'm going to be honest, and I am a – I am an Eagles fan. Everybody knows that. Um, I thought they were going to overturn it. I honestly did. Um, reading what the referee said uh, and the reason why they didn't, they just didn't have conclusive evidence to overturn it, so they went with the call that was on the field. It was a it was a tricky call. You know, of course, them being on the field, they couldn't really tell. I don't know what angles they see when they look at this tablet since they're not going under the hood anymore. Um, there were a couple of questionable calls in the game as well. Um, there was a call where Darren Sproles caught the ball. It looked like it hit the ground first. I thought they were going to overturn that as well. They didn't. <laughs> but all in all, those calls didn't decide the game. You know, um, I definitely do want to give shouts out to their defense because their defense did step it up a lot. Their defense, to me, was the reason why they were in the game as long as they were. Um, you know, I saw the pick sick as soon as the ball left uh, Winston's, Wentz's hand. I didn't even get up because I saw it the whole way. I was like, it's over for that one. So uh, let's go ahead and move past that. Um, but, yeah, um, excited. Oh, I say that back. Not excited, but, you know, looking forward to see what happens with the Redskins going forward as far as, you know, the miscues and the missteps that they had this week. Um, I believe they play the Chargers next week. Nah, they're going to take on Sean McVay and the Rams, the old offense. Oh, I'm Rams. sorry. I knew it was the L.A. You. team. It's too you. many of them now. There are. Um, so, yeah. Um, but to kind of round it out quickly with the uh, NFC East, Giants, they just need offense. Three points is not going to cut it. Of course, they're missing um, Beckham. But, you know, Shepard, um, Brandon Marshall, um, all those people have to step it up to figure something out because three points isn't going to cut it against anybody. Um, Dallas, of course, they always, you know, send, tend to battle with, you know, the um, Giants. The Giants, you know, beat them two times last year, so I'm pretty sure that they were excited about, you know, getting together. Des Bryant, you know, two catches. I can't even remember how many yards. It wasn't enough. Um, I believe he said Janoris Jenkins got lucky. It's the second time. Yeah, right? so I wish Nothing you would stop him letting him get lucky, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Okay, cool. Um, and yeah. to round it off with my Eagles, I'm excited. You know, of course, starting the game off, uh, starting the season off with a win is always a big deal, especially the fact that we haven't beat the Redskins in the past, at least season. I'm not sure if it's two. Like I can't think back. I yeah, it's been a while. Um, so um, I was excited to see Wentz move more and be able to get out the pocket and deliver. And the one thing that I kept saying at the stadium, who has Nelson Aguilar turned into? He turned into the, I've never seen him catch the ball this much. He turned into the guy he was at USC. And I was like, who is Nelson? Because, you know, since Alshon Jeffrey came over, now Jeffrey's 17 and Aguilar has changed to 13. So it didn't register in my head. And I'm watching the game like, who is 13? And who <laughs> is this catching the ball like this? It's confidence. Like, and yeah. what I what I think is partially that, and I definitely think that I think the competition has stepped up, mm -hmm. and he's starting to realize, like, okay, it's real wide receivers out here that I will not be playing if I don't get it together. So I believe that the addition of Torrey Smith as well as Alshon Jeffrey has lit a fire underneath him. Um, 
We also had some injuries. Darby, which killed us um, because, to me, they didn't score an offensive touchdown until after he got hurt. So Darby getting hurt kind of hits us, especially because we just picked him up. Sturgis is going to be out, I believe, four weeks. We just picked up a rookie kicker, so kind of nervous about that as well. But, you know, next week we play Kansas City, so we'll see what happens. All right, well, Octavia, we thank you very much. This is the end of local coverage. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back. Um, hey, look, the show is going to continue, man. You're watching The Focus. Welcome back. Welcome back to The Focus, man. We got a little surprise, a little twist here. Instead of rapid fire, uh, we're going to do something just as hotly contested. How about that? Uh, we saw some, some, uh, some different outlets and publications put lists out of top players in the league, top 25 players to be exact. Um, yeah, and I think what spurned this decision was the Lonzo ball over Melo thing that kind of drove everybody nuts because it doesn't make any sense. But, Cardell, it was your idea, man. Let's, let's get going. And a quick update real quick from the Mystics. They are trailing by 12 at the moment. Mm. It's 43 it's together, at the half. All right, I'm going to go through kind of quick. I'm going to start from 25, work my way up. On 25th, I have Nikola Jokic. Whatever. Hey. Uh, 24th, I give it to Blake Griffin. Um, 23, I don't know why he gets overlooked, but Hassan Whiteside. Uh, 22nd, Gordon Hayward. You know, rightfully so. I love what he did last year. 21st, mm -hmm. Draymond Green. Um, 20th, Mike Conley, who I think is the most underrated point guard in the league. Um, yes, that's and not player. Agreed. Uh, 19th, I have Klay Thompson. Self-explanatory. 18, DeMar DeRozan. 17, Isaiah Thomas. I hope his hip get better, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But based on what he did last year, self-explanatory. 16, Jimmy Butler. 15, DeMarcus Cousins. 14, you know, Chris Paul. You know, I feel like a lot of people give him a – he's a dog, but I feel like a lot of people give him a pass over the years. And I feel like a lot of point guards have leaped him. You know, let, you know it's just real. So they can get married. It is what it is. Mm -hmm. 13, Damian Lillard. Another player who's underrated. Who don't All get the time. This, yeah, it seems like they – this is crazy how they treat him. Carl Anthony Towns. Um, mm -hmm. he, he's a dog. I mean, arguably the best son in the league. Now he got to put the wins behind him. Otherwise, he will drop. I mean, there's no excuse now. Uh, 11, Paul George. 10th, uh, I have John Wall. Uh, ninth, Kyrie Irving. 8th, James Harden. I know a lot of people are like, you're second MVP. But, you know, you'll understand when I name these other players. 7th, <laughs> Anthony Davis. Six Greek freak, fifth Steph Curry, fourth the reigning MVP Russell Westbrook, third Kawhi Leonard, second Kevin Durant, and of course first LeBron James. That's my twenty-five. May so, as always, you know we agree in some places, disagree in others. I love where you at White Side because I don't think he gets nearly enough love for what he is and the position that he plays. All right, so probably for me, I'm probably going. My biggest changes was um I had Clay and Dre a little bit higher. Um, than you did. That's the only thing, really. Um, but I like that you had IT in there um, in the top 20 because I think some people don't respect. Um, you know, on some people's list, I think they would probably forget him out of the top 25 easily. Just, you know, just, and again, when I say this, talk about the masses. I know I talk to y'all, y'all know what I mean, y'all. Not talking about <laughs> anything in anybody, anybody with inside the focus. I'm not talking about us. <laughs> talk about y'all out there on the other side of the screen. Um, Yes, for me, I, probably, I had Dre at 16, um, I had CP3 at 15, Boogie at 14, Clay at 13, um, Cat at 12, and I was really, I got Kyrie at 11, um, which I'm sure some people probably have a much higher. Um, I got Wall at 10, PG at 9, uh, James at 8, uh, AD at 7, Giannis at 6, Russ at 5, got Kawhi at 4. Steph at three, KD at two, and Braun at the one, uh, at the top spot for me. So. Well, I, I'm going to say I kind of agree with both of y'all. <laughs> um, I think it's kind of touchy when we get into the top 25. A lot of people, you know, feel like they should be ranked higher than, than they are. Um, I definitely agree with the Dame um, situation because I think the players that play in smaller markets sometimes don't get their just due. Um, Dame has been – <laughs> like dragging Portland into the playoffs every year. Mm -hmm. And that's overlooked a lot. Um, I'm going to be honest, I don't have a, cont a list right this second. Um, but that's definitely something I'll be back with. But, of course, I can, you know, I agree with the Kyrie uh, around the 11 to 9 spot. 
Um, top, I, at least, you know, top five. Everybody knows that. <laughs> and of course, you got uh, LeBron at one, Kevin at two. I can actually, you know, agree with Kawhi at three. I would put Steph at four, and I would put Russ at five. Um James Harden for me is around the seven or eight as well. You know, my whole issue with him is I just need a complete player. He doesn't he doesn't get, do it for me on defense at all. So I need him to get that together. Um, I got Clay around the eleven twelve area as well. Um, but you know, it's it's a tight race. There's so much talent in the NBA today that um, it's really hard to kind of pinpoint. And everybody, of course, has their different ways of looking at situations and why they have players where they have them. Um, but, of course, while we're on the situation I and mean, on the topic, I'm pretty sure that this is probably next. Um, Lonzo Ball, yeah, I believe he was ranked 45. Rapid fire. Yeah, we was getting that rapid fire real quick. Man, just, we, I, that was my first question. Go ahead. I mean, it's, 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 yeah, yeah. it's been I was brought like, to I'm, the table. I'm pretty sure we're, 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 we're almost there. I mean, you know, Slam Magazine um, mm -hmm. released their top 50 players, and he was ranked 45th. I'm hearing ESPN released their rankings, and – he was ranked, um, I think, a couple spots above Melo. Melo was like 64 for something like that. And I'm basically like, what the hell? You know, he hasn't even played a game, y'all, for Summer League. And that just shows you where we are in sports. That hype stuff just to make money, it's crazy. It, it, it it's so overwhelming amazing. what's real. Like, no rookie should be top 50 yet. Like, I don't even care if you Shaq or Kareem or, you know, like. Just off the Play, just play first. It. You got to yeah. earn it, man. Yeah. You know, so it's hard to. Give people credibility when it's stuff like that. that. That makes no sense. And I just think it also adds, like we talk about almost every time when we bring him up, it adds another target on his back. And uh, you, you guys know I'm a Mellow fan. That's that's my guy. But I'm completely realistic when it comes to it. But are you okay with the rankings like him that low? No, I'm not. But I am, I'm, I am realistic as far as I understand why he's probably not top 10, top 15, no, stuff so like where, that. Like, would you have? I, I was like, I get it because of – how people think you know what i mean when we talk about the masses yeah you know but to me it, it's you got to look at the production of the player i think a lot of times they just look at the team but when you're evaluating them as an individual you need to evaluate them as an individual you know no, you can't stop him from scoring the only person that can stop him from scoring is him if he if he's just off if he has an off night but you know it is what it is i'm used to the mellow um hate <laughs> so I wasn't surprised when I saw it. Um, but, you know, all that does is make him work harder. I don't know if you guys saw the Instagram post, but uh, Hoodie Mellow will be coming out soon. So we'll see what happens. I just don't understand. Like, just I understand. Like, you know, obviously he's not top 10 in the league. He's not top 15. That's cool. But to totally disrespect something, somebody, you know, his, his body of work his entire career, to throw him 60 anything is ridiculous. To, to kick him out the top 50 is even more absurd. I think I think they're just doing it for shock value. I really just think that's right. what it's about now. Just, you know, Michael Jordan's 10th all time now. You know, just something just to get people talking, just to get people to pay attention. I'm, I'm about to stop even following football again. It's just, <laughs> Look, <laughs> but I'm saying we're talking about somebody, okay, you want summer league MVP. We, you don't have a career average in the league yet, right? This dude, for 15 seasons, has averaged 20 points. And something has to be said, fine, you can make players around you better, but you still got to be able to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. Like You know what I'm saying? It's the same as if you sc a scorer, but you can't pass. It's the same type of impact, you know? And like I said, that works in summer league. Those dudes ain't going to do that in, in the real game, if they're in the real game. If they even if make the know, team. My point exactly. So let me get a couple That's more questions before we get off of here. Yeah. Um, let me scroll down. You kind of – Baker Mayfield led Oklahoma to a 31-16 win hey. over number two Ohio State. Hey. Sealing the deal with the Oklahoma flag plant in the middle of the field. But then he apologized for doing it. Shouldn't have apologized. Oh, wait, is it warranted? Shouldn't have apologized. He's nice to me. No, like, I, nice. I don't see the issue with it. It was a big win. It's cool. What's the problem? And y'all sung y'all fight song yes. out there. Man, you look like I ain't cop a squad but I mean, in the middle of the field. Like, <laughs> but but, but seriously, ignorant. isn't this what like the whole culture of college sports is supposed mm -hmm. to be? Playing for like the, the school and all this other stuff. So he kind of did that. That was a school's flag, not a personal flag, right? Mm -hmm. So in the spirit of collegiate ath amateur athletics, what was wrong with what he did? I loved it. Baker Mayfield. Man. And, and y'all know, like, I'm, I'm trying to. Pay more attention to college football. Uh -huh. it's, it's hard for me sometimes, but I actually watched the game. And I watched the game last week. I, I like him. He's a 
it, dog. And, and I don't it's think you should apologize either. It's all in, you know, like we say, the sport, the fun of it, the college atmosphere. It, it, he ain't hurt nobody. They was yelling and screaming at him the whole game. So what? Man, I'd apologize. I'd be like, I apologize for not doing more. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm like, get out of here. Man, that's crazy. I saw the apology. I was just like, who made him do it and why? Yeah, I'm, I'm from like, the school. Like, if you don't want him talking trash or to, to beat him. Stop him. If you don't want the game. I mean, they was number two ranked and they beat you. And like, y'all were number two. We came in, we beat y'all at y'all field. I mean, like, well, of course. Secondly, y'all had no business being ranked number two. So that's another <laughs> issue for another day. Uh, but uh, go ahead, Cardell. Last like question of the show. Uh, yeah. um, let me see. Bob What's Ryan that? says Duke can hold moral high ground. He says Duke has evolved to be manipulative and greedy and embracing one and done players. Is Mr. Ryan correct? He said Duke can find moral ground, high moral ground. Can't grounds. hold moral high ground anymore. You know how they used to get on, kind of throw shade yeah. at Cal for getting one of Yeah, done. I mean, okay, so what? Like, I don't even understand the purpose of the statement. Like, that's just where we are in college sports. Like, Coach K gets paid to win, right? And if, if, if that's what you have to do to win, it is what it is. I mean, yeah, you can't do the moral, you can't talk down on anybody now that you did it. But my whole thing is just, I don't understand. I don't think there's a need. A need for discussion on it like it's just not that deep to me I mean, dog, your job is to get the best players you can and that's what i'm saying that's what they're paying and you, you for, can't right? stop them from leaving so and, and that's my whole point um <laughs> kirk cousins <laughs> that's a great after the skins show. lost to the eagles said i think the protection can be better there's no doubt fair or foul for cousins to criticize the old i'd say you go first and foul um don't hang your teammates out to dry like that it's the first game of the season you think you think you already talking trash about them? They gonna want to protect you next week? Like you gotta, you know. I just feel like everybody should just take their part in the role. Mm -hmm. Let the offensive line take their responsibility as they take it. You're the quarterback. You're the leader of the team. You want to get a long term deal. You gotta produce. So regardless, you better start running around and make a good decision and, and where to pass the ball. Real quick, how to see Marvin Lewis or Jay Gruden? I could tie my answers together from the last question in this one. I'm going to say right. Jay Gruden. Uh, I'm with Octavia on that because you tied yourself to this quarterback that can't take responsibility and accountability for the team's actions when it was you that decided to force the ball into two people when Jameson Crowder was wide open yet again. I don't know why it's so difficult for you to find Jameson Crowder who spent <laughs> wide open. This is like the second year. You lost a playoff game like that before too. You know, like it, it's becoming a reoccurring thing. So it's hard for me. I don't understand how a quarterback says that. Like the quarterback had the, the typical wide receiver answer. And the wide receiver had the quarterback's answer. Mm, didn't think about that, but you're right. Terrell Pryor, a former quarterback, gave you the quarterback answer. That is a great point. Hey, you saying. Last question. <laughs> the NBA is evaluating draft lottery reform to discourage tanking. Is it a much-needed move? Yes, because I'm tired of seeing people just lose for the heck of it. Like, I'm tired of seeing it. Like, if we're supposed to be the NBA, the best players in the world plays in this league, like, play to win. Like, I, I get the whole business aspect of it because you're trying to get good picks and everything like that. But play to win. If you lose, you lose. That's a different story. Like, if you just don't have the talent to beat the team, that's cool. But just doing it on purpose just so you can set up yourself up for next year. Like, play better and win better. Like, get better as a team. Like, get it together. Yeah, I'm with Octavia. Like, just it, it, front offices need to be held, held responsible. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone Make keeps talking decisions. about the kids coming out of school. It's your decision to select said kid. That was your choice. Nobody put a gun in your head to make you take that kid. You could have took a proven college player. And what people you know? don't know what they so mean draft lottery of reform is, instead of like the worst team having 25% yeah. of the ping pong balls in there, they will actually bridge that gap. So the number one team might have 15% right. of it. So it's not as guaranteed that you would get the number one nah. pick or have our pick. Mm -hmm. So that would discourage you from tanking because if you tank, Cleveland Cavaliers might get the number one pick again, and it's just like, oh, dang. Anything to pick, stop so. that, just because mm -hmm. it's horrible. Yeah, because it messes up a competitive yeah. balance, so, so play. That's all we that's all that we ask. Like, y'all did compete, do it from from the top down. Getting you know, especially from offices, a grip man. to do and this, people man. People still paying $2,000. <laughs> man, for a you seat. paid a grip. Man, it's crazy. And then the whole time, you just like, oh, nah, we'll get them in three years. We got a three-year plan. What? I, I see, well, look, <laughs> give me my money back for three years. Do the season tickets come with, like, a three-year plan? for Because they don't. So that being said, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to the focus. As always, we uh, we implore you guys to get over to finestmag.com, get over to mymodelsports.com. We gotta, we're going to keep you guys updated uh, with Mystics content the rest of the week. Uh, right now, it is halftime. They're down 53-38 to the Lynx. Um, you know, it's not over to the Fat Lady Saints. We're going to see what happens. But uh, big second half is in need for the Washington Mystics. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same place.